All right, what is up, guys? My name is Coriola, and welcome to episode number eight of my Out of the Park Baseball 17 franchise here with the Kansas City Royals. And we are here at the off season episode, and after a disappointing loss at the end of the 2017 um, season, to, we lose in four games. We lose the ALDS in four games to the Boston Red Sox. We now look to 2018, but as many of you know who follow the Royals in real life, this is a crossroads year, and thankfully we got uh, Hosmer on an extension, but we've got uh, Moustakas, Kane, Morales, Dyson, Escobar. This team's going to look very, very different next year. So, you know, let's get... Um, straight into it. First, we have to look at the uh, end of the season. So, new budget is going to be 170 million for payroll. That is very nice. I do pray that that is enough money to sign back who I want, and you'll see who that is in a second. He's not happy about um, not re-signing Wade Davis. He's not happy about C.J. Wilson. Made the playoffs. He wants a championship in the next two years. We made the playoffs. Okay. We need to improve team home runs. Which would be hard if we lose Morales and Moustakas. Achieve a winning record. Sign Wade Davis and bring in a team leader. Win the World Series by 2019. So, this is huge for us. Ian Kennedy has voided his contract. While it means we have one less spot in the rotation covered, it means we are not on the books for, I believe, $16 million over three years, or per year for three years, which would be $48 million for the next three years. I'm super happy that we don't have to deal with that. Um, David Hernandez met his option. I'll be fine bringing him back next year. I hope he has a bit better year than he did this year. And finally, Danny Duffy. He wants, or his option is for $7 million, but on extension, he only wants 5 So we're actually going to avoid his option and uh, get right into it. So I have gone through this, looked over everything, and just kind of gave myself a layout, a plan as to how I wanted to go about this off season. First things first, let's get the arbitration. Kelvin Herrera has not been great in um, this series so far. That is an extra zero. Not offering him 36 mil a year. He will get 3.6. Um, that's Herrera, not Neville. I will eventually become consistent pronouncing his last name. So... As I was saying, Kelvin Herrera has struggled with us. His rating's all the way down to one star. His 45 controls what ki what's killing him. Hopefully he has a good year next year. Will Smith, we'd love to bring him back for the low, low price of 2.4. Will he accept that? He will. I always try to save as much money as I can on these arbitration uh, settlements. Oops, that should be 4.4, not 4.0. He does like that, so we just saved 400 k between Smith and Barrett, and who knows, that might be the difference between getting a free agent and not. Evan Scribner, we will let go, 1.7 million. That is too much to be paying a guy to play in AAA. And I do realize we have the hole in our bullpen with Josh Cornelly. So... Actually, let's see if we can get Scribner on like a one-year one. Will he do that? Mm. No. Okay, we'll let Scribner go. We can find someone else. Uh, DJ LeMahieu, let's see if we can get him on a nice little extension. Let's try four million this year. And then in year two, we'll go up to eight. And in year three, we'll have the same. He likes that. So that's a pretty solid deal for a guy like LeMahieu. I'm happy with that. If he can 
produce just as he did last year. And as we are probably losing Escobar, bringing back Christian Cologne, not a bad idea. So now I can do all of this stuff uh, off screen. Probably give most of these guys who want major league deals their major league deals. Um, so the guys I want back are Kane, Davis, Duffy, uh, and Moustakis. And how much does Wilson want? And CJ Wilson. That's realistic. So let's start with Duffy. He wants a bit more than he did before. I'm willing to do just three years, 13 with a team option for the third. Sounds reasonable. Duffy will be in our starting rotation next year. Next, Mike, actually, let's do Lorenzo next. He does not want too terribly much money, but I do want to take that down to just three years, and we will bump. See if he'll take this. He likes that. Okay. That's perfectly fine with me. We still have, according to this, $59 million, or sorry, $60 million left after Kane. So that gives us plenty of money for Mike Moustakis, who has just been so much better than his rating suggests. I don't know why it's so low, but um, he's been fantastic for us. And I am definitely willing to give him a big time extension. And I'd like to cap it at five years with a team option. Let's see if we can just go 22 for four. Please work, please work. Not what he wanted. Let's try this. Let's take that up to, we've got a bit extra money, 24.5. With a team option at the end. Still doesn't like that. Okay, let's... Mm, I'm a bit worried. Asking for just one less year is going to cost us Mike Moustakis. Alright, he's 29 years old. I don't want to give him five years. I can give him four years with no option. But I want to put that team option on there. Oh, this is killing me. Okay, we have to come back to him later. We will qualify him, and we won't qualify anybody else. Um, Wilson, we will offer... Uh, let's see if we can get 1.5. Yep. Him is good. Kennedy only wants $14 million, which is actually less than he would have made, which surprises me. I don't know why he opted out. Um, but Dyson, we're not going to... Well... No, we just have... We have enough guys to replace Dyson. Morales, saving that money for Moustakis. Davis, I will see on him. We will, in the meantime, submit the qualifying offer to him. And also to Lorenzo Cain. If he takes one year, um, if he takes one year, that would actually be beneficial for us. So that is it for this part. I'm going to do all these minor league free agents and i'll be back uh at the beginning of award season so thanks for watching this part i'll be right back all right we are back the day before the awards begin and this is a trade that i have decided to do arquimedes camierno or Cam caminero excuse me has been offered to me for basically anybody on my team including John Cornelly, but I don't know what he, Pittsburgh's problem with him is. He's 30, which is a bit old, but he doesn't have a bad contract. He's got really good ratings. He's a serviceable reliever, unlike Cornelly for a contending team. So why not do that? I don't understand why Pittsburgh wanted to get rid of him, but we will gladly take him. So... Uh, back to this, everyone has accepted that I've offered. I did not offer to Cologne. He wanted somewhere like $1.1 million. Uh, Decker has not accepted because I didn't offer him anything because that's not worth 
600k. Lorenzo Kane is the only player I have actually offered that is not accepted yet. Still waiting for Mustakas to cool down a bit. Mm, he's mad at us. Um. So yeah, we're just going to go through the awards and see what happens. So, Gold Glove Award. Eric Hosmer is our one Gold Glove recipient. Reliever of the Year goes to Zach Britton with Kaon Kayla, who we tried to acquire last season, if you remember. Unsuc Actually, you don't remember, but I did make a big push for him in the 2016 season. Uh, you don't remember because I didn't record that part. Salvador Perez and Mike Moustakis and Kendris Morales are Silver Sluggers, and we might lose um, two of those. But Lorenzo Cain is back for three years. Rookie of the Year is Rowdy Tellez. Max Kepler finishes third. Manager goes to A.J. Hinch. Cy Young to Dallas Keuchel with Josh Colmenter finishing third. I will take that. Uh, NL goes to Noah Syndergaard. NL Rookie of the Year was Josh E. Bell. Jesse Winker, that's a familiar name, finishes third. So, two Nationals and a Met for the NL Cy Young. Carlos Correa is your MVP with Trout finishing second, Odor third, Chris Bryant has won it in the National League, Harper second, Seager third. Nothing surprising there. Let's check back up on Moustakas. Okay, he wants a six-year deal. All right, I'm going to try something. We'll go five years. I'm going to drop this number to 22. And this number to 22. then this is going to go up to 30. I want to just save a bit of money in these first couple of years and put a team option on that. What does he think? Damn it, Mike Boustakis has ended negotiations with us. Wade Davis, what does he want? We'll try to bring him back. We'll wait till he hits the open market. I have a feeling his price will go down. So, bit disappointing, this um, free agency, to be honest, as we don't get Moustakas back like we wanted, and so we will head into free agency with him, with all these guys on the open market. Both Moustakas and Davis have filed for free agency. And it is time for free agents, but right after we look at the international market. And there is an interesting player immediately, and that's probably too much for us. We do have f around $50 million. Uh, I did not see his ratings. Don't care, don't care. Really good catcher. If we didn't have Salvador Perez. Backup catcher, no. Nope. And nope. So I'd be interested in offering Gil a minor league contract. Which he wants. And possibly this uh, Jordan Castillo guy. A minor league contract as well. So. Let's check the open market. Obviously, two guys we want back are Moustakis. Uh, St. Louis is interested. Or sorry, San Francisco is interested. Okay, this is a lot less money. I can deal with this. I can make this work. How would that make me lose a draft pick? This is my compensated. He's happy right now. Team option for the fourth, and we will up this to 24 
a year. And now all of a sudden he's going back. Okay. No team option. There we go. I will take that for Mike Moustakis. Next up. Now Ian Kennedy wants a lot more money. It's 19 million over six years. I know we probably overpaid for him to get yet less years, but honestly, that is something I am perfectly willing to do. So I looked through this class, and there is one guy in particular I want, and he's not on this list. But first, let's offer Wade Davis a contract. Can we do two years, 17? That's two, literally two player options for the same year on that last contract. Wade Davis is getting a bit pricey, but the guy I do want is Alex Cobb to uh, be our fifth starter for the year. But if we can't get Davis back, I'm kind of interested in this guy. Mm. He's not proven, though. Cobb isn't doing great. Mike Miner's back. Masahiro Tanaka, Nathan Ivaldi. Ian Kennedy wants 19 million. I'm actually very happy that he opted out of that contract. Willie Peralta, that's an interesting one. John Neese, Wade Miley. We already have two lefties, so getting a third is not a huge priority. So let's offer Alex Cobb a quick contract. We'll offer him three years. Let's go with 4.5 with a vesting option of 180 innings pitched. That's close. What if we made it Let's just make it 150, because if we don't like him, we can throw him into the bullpen. Team option. There we go. That works. Team option is actually better for us. I don't know why he uh, wanted to do that. But now, last but not least, is Wade Davis. And we could always go back to Greg Holland if we can't get Davis back. But his low control is just not something I want. I want Wade Davis back. And so does our general manager. Maybe. This is basically a mutual option. What if we put that down there? Okay, Wade Davis does like our offer. I'm pretty sure that's what we could call a mutual option and that's a bit interesting uh, how that worked out but we're going to be paying a lot of people a lot of money and let's hope that they accept the contracts where it is and they don't go up too much so I will see you guys back when something interesting happens I come back to you just a few days later with unfortunate news. Kansas City Royals owner da David Glass has passed away. So, he wasn't the most charitable owner. But he won us a World Series and we will forever miss Mr. Glass. His son, Mike Glass, has taken over, and I can tell my relationship with him is going to be pretty, you know, I'm not going to be mad about this guy. He's charitable, tolerant on the patient's level, hands-off involvement, three great things I love from a, a owner, and new goals, upgrade at shortstop, Raul Mondesi, winning record, doable world series in the next five seasons we can do that so 
excuse me. We will miss Mr. Glass, and we will move forward with Mr. Glass, the new Mr. Glass, in to the 2018 season. All right, we are back about five days before the beginning beginning of the winter meetings, and we have some good news. The two international free agents we went after, both signed. Alex Cobb, he is signed. Mike Moustakis is happy with our offer, and a couple days ago we learned that Wade Davis is happy with our offer, so we are very, very close to getting everybody we wanted. And then New York throws in one of the worst proposals I've seen, but, you know, that's life. Okay, William. Anyway, I'll see you guys back with hopefully some good news from Moustakis and Wade Davis. All right, another update just uh, three days later. Mike Moustakis has signed back on a pretty sizable contract. Four years, 27 mil. Hopefully he can keep up his production. He's been fantastic the two years that I've been doing this franchise. He was fantastic in 2015. No reason to believe that he won't stop producing which finally just leaves um just leaves Wade Davis. So yeah, hopefully he is the final one and we get everyone we wanted. So that would be very nice. I will see you guys back when he gives us another update, hopefully saying closer Wade Davis, contract signed. Alright, see ya. All right, we are back, and actually, we don't have an update from Wade Davis. This is actually the Rule 5 draft, so I've gone through the um, players eligible. I have DFA'd and waived Matt Stram, Cam Gallagher, Chesler, Cuthbert, and Paulo Orlando. Next up, Rule 5 draft. I doubt I'll be picking anyone unless there's someone that blows me away. I bet there's to be at least one or two guys taken from us. Never mind. All right. Jesse Hahn is interesting. Courtney Hawkins and Derek Hill. A former Detroit Tiger. I would love taking him away from Boston. Ooh. <laughs> Or Courtney Hawkins. He's got some pop. He could be our DH to start the year. And he'd be we'd be taking him from a division rival. I am very needless to say, very intrigued. I like Hill though because he's got the speed. And he's 21 years old. So, yeah, we will take Derek Hill. I did not expect someone like him to be available in this draft. Still no one taken by us. I will not take another pick for Hawkins. I do have a plan for the DH spot. But f first, I have to see whether Wade Davis accepts or not. So, until then, I will be uh, right back. All right, Happy New Year. It is now 2018. I am a couple months away from graduating high school, which is crazy to think about. And Wade Davis has, in fact, signed. Um, interestingly enough, Craig Kimbrell's asking price has gone quite down. As you can see, only 11 up to 17. That is five years, though. So, um, yeah, but... Uh, Wade Davis is back in Kansas City, meaning we have to clear another spot. And I'm thinking it's going to be Bubba Starling. I do like his power, but I don't think we're going to be needing it. So $10 million down the drain for the Kansas City Royals, basically. And we will eventually need to clear one more spot after uh, what I'm hoping to do here. So Wade Davis... Uh, so all these guys have cleared waivers, which is interesting. Hall of Fame voting results, we will get just simulate one day forward to that. 
your Hall of Famers. Vladimir Guerrero, Guerrero, Chipper Jones, and Jim Tomey. That, those are three guys I grew up watching and just thinking every time they played against the Royals, they're going to shit on us. <sighs> Great careers by those three. Absolutely deserved. Absolutely. Anyway, um... Here's my plan, and I am hoping he's still on the market. The one guy labeled as a designated hitter by the league, and that is Billy Butler. His ratings have gone down a lot, but I am willing to give him a shot because I love Billy, and I can't resist the chance to bring him back. But we wouldn't have enough money. I've already offered him I was looking at that so that's slightly less than 1 million meaning we have to clear 500k which would be in the form of one of the guys that we have weighed and DFA'd so preferably trying to trade one of these guys for a minor league contract like Teddy Stankiewicz. Not a good deal for them. Of course it's not. What would it take to make it work? Ash Russell. Okay. Well, let's shop him around. I will come back when I have a trade because I just need to clear 500k to be able to get Billy Butler. Be right back. All right, we are back one day later, and apparently Archimedes, his salary has gone up to 2.3 million without me knowing. I have no idea how this possibly happened, so I shopped him around and found a... Uh, Aratus Vizcaino, who Baltimore's eager to get rid of, I think. He would be fantastic for this team. Throw in Mott's, Matt Stram, and we get up to $1.3 million, enough to offer Butler a contract. So we will complete that trade, meaning... Welcome. Wait. Wait. Welcome. And after one day... Welcome. And um, now to offer Butler his contract. He wants what? Hello, I cleared all that money. We're supposed to have 1.2. This game. All right. He's going to be mad about that. Oh, never mind. He's not. Cool. Okay. So we are very up on the edge as far as money goes. And, uh, yeah, we will simulate forward a couple of days. Wait for him to hopefully accept. He is happy with the deal. Let's just simulate this way. It's a bit faster. Trade proposal, Detroit, Los Angeles, Andrew, now why in God's name would I ever do that? Goodbye, Los Angeles. And Billy Butler is back in a Royals uniform for one year, and if all goes wrong... We have added uh, Ryan O'Hearn to the 40-man roster. He is up to, I believe, either one and a half or two stars. And if all goes wrong, he will become our um, DH if Butler cannot handle the position. And last but not least, you will be the final casualty. Wave and DFA him. 
Money might be a bit tight next year, which is why we're going to need to do well this season. We don't think we really have anyone coming off the books next year besides Colmenter. And I believe Soria has a option, which we will in no possible world accept. But, uh... Yeah, not a lot coming off the books next year. And a couple guys going up. So, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, I can... Actually, no, it's not. We just have to make sure we get through spring training without too many casualties. So, um, that's it for the off-season portion. Spring training, end of spring training, will be up next. So, this should be the final jump cut for the episode all right, this is the last part of the episode. It's been going on for quite a while now, but uh, we are here. End of spring training. Wade Davis missed two weeks. He is back, thankfully. Um, and Foster Griffin was injured, so we put him on the DL. And instead of sending him down to AAA, which will undoubtedly cause problems during the regular season, but for now, that is fine. So this is what our starting staff will look like. It'll go Ventura, Colmenter, Cobb, Duffy, Wilson with Davis and the closer. Aaron Barrett will be our setup man. Uh, will Smith will be our other setup man. And Nebel, Soria, Vizcaino, and David Hernandez will be our middle reliever. And as you might notice, no Kelvin Herrera. He was the final roster cut. He has been sent down to triple A. Lineup-wise... Uh, we sent down pretty much everyone expected. Our lineup will be such LeMay, Humustakis, Kane, Gord, Kane, Hosmer, Gordon, Perez, Marmol, Butler, and Mondesi against lefties. Gordon and Perez will switch. Um, I do plan on moving Mondesi to the top of the lineup if he starts hitting. Um, I think LeMay is a good candidate there because he gets on base a lot. 351 last year, you know. Uh, doesn't hit a ton of home runs. Kind of a prototypical leadoff guy. And then I'm still contemplating switching Moustakis and Kane, but I don't want to have this three lefty block in the middle here. So uh, Derek Hill will back up center and right. Merrifield third and left. Cologne. Uh, th er, Merrifield second and left. Cologne third and shortstop. And Zane Evans DH and catcher. So that's it for this episode. I am very happy with how this went. Could have been a lot, a lot worse, believe me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.